Dear Lord, we pray for all those on the front lines fighting this virus, and for those who have contracted the virus, we pray for them specifically. Dear Lord, we pray for this local church, the Shepherd of the Hills United Methodist Church, all the local churches throughout the United States, and we pray for the church universal to continue our ministry and for the guidance and bringing Christ's love to the world during these times of change. Dear Lord, we pray for a breakthrough against this dreaded virus. Dear Lord, we thank you for hearing our praise. Almighty God, our everlasting Father, we are here today to praise your holy name, for only you, our great triune God, are worthy of our worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we continue to worship you as we pray the prayer to the risen Christ, the Son of God, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. At this time, we have some special music from your grandma. Thank you, thank you, sir. And before this song, I just wanted to mention real quick, uh, from the bottom of my heart and my wife's heart and my little daughter's heart, um, we are so grateful for the support and love that we've received from the congregation, both in uh, letters and cards and, and messages and phone calls, monetary support, everything you guys have offered to us has been so uh, overwhelmingly wonderful, and we, we don't even know who to thank because so much of it's been anonymous. And so we, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for supporting me and my family in this. Uh, and I know it's a difficult time for many, and, and we we're so grateful. So thank you. I just wanted to say that to our entire family. We love you, and um, thank you again. This song is. Um, not actually in the United Methodist hymnal, but this is a song called Where Can I Turn for Peace? And you may have heard it before. So we'll see you later. Where can I turn
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Luke. What a beautiful song, wonderfully done. And yes, Christ's love is without end. For our scripture reading today, John, the 20th chapter, we're reading from the inspired Word of God, His wisdom and His revelation, the 20th chapter and selective verses. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Now when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said to them, Peace to you as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. But Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he, Thomas, said to them, Unless I see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. And reach your hand here and put, into them, put them into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We know John at this point in his gospel, he's telling us about the events, the events of Easter evening. So the disciples are in their place. They are there and they are somewhat cowering, if you would. They are afraid to leave. And Jesus, miraculously, he appears before them. And what does he say? What is the first thing that Jesus says to the disciples? He says, peace be with you. Peace. In the Hebrew, that means shalom. It's more than just peace itself, if you would. It's best wishes. It's prosperity. It's blessing. And these are the first words to the disciples that are cowering away in this room and are afraid to go out. But you see, what you need to point out here today what we need to talk about is the thing that Jesus didn't do you see Jesus didn't chastise them for not being with him when he died on the cross he didn't shame them for their cowardice he didn't convey disappointment in them he didn't call them out for being behind locked doors even though Mary Magdalene earlier in the day had told him that he
prosperity best wishes to you all my disciples and then jesus says to thomas doesn't he look at look at my stars put your finger in the nail hole see my side but the point he is making is this thomas please do not be unbelieving but believing and we see dear friends this is where thomas makes the great proclamation that is still with us today in the exact words what does Thomas say? My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And you see, you have to understand the significance of this. In our era, in our age, we kind of use those interchangeably. They're, they're the same word to us, Lord and God. But not in that era. You see, Lord was a master, was a rabbi, was a good teacher, if you would. They referred to many people as Lord during that era. But they never referred to a person who's walking on the earth as God. And that's what Thomas is doing. Perhaps he's going back to the proclamations made by the patriarchs, the prophets, and the kings who had prophesied about the Messiah, the Christ, hundreds if not a millennia before. Maybe he's remembering Jesus' own words just days before, and he now realizes that yes, this is the Messiah. But not only that, this is the Son of the living God. And then he says those words, my Lord and my God. A confession of faith we hold dear to to this day. Then Jesus says these words, Thomas, because you have not seen me, you have believed, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Did you catch that, that last phrase? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Dear friends, you know who he's talking about? He's talking about us. You see, as part of God's plan, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Christ, but fully human, fully divine. He walked the earth at a specific point in our timeline, in our history. He was at specific geographic locations. He traveled to specific cities that were there during that era. But what Jesus is saying to them, and he's saying the words to Thomas, to Thomas, yes, you believe and God bless you because you have seen me, but for all the people coming after you, for all the people who are on the face of the earth at this time who have not seen me, blessed are they because they believe even though they have not physically seen me. You see, that's the blessing, the specific blessing that we have of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Well, it's a couple of things to ponder in this day. You know, just as Christ, Jesus the Christ, understood the fears, the shortcomings, and the disappointments of his disciples, dear friends, he understands us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He loves us with a love beyond compare. He knows when we're remorseful and readily forgives us when we are so. You see, Christ will never give up on us. Just as he didn't give up on the disciples, just as he didn't give up on Peter, when Peter denied him three times on the night that he was betrayed by Judas. Peter, who was amongst the crowds, and in the first opportunity that he was challenged by someone as to just even knowing Jesus the Christ, he denied Jesus. But you see, Jesus understands us. Jesus forgives us. And Jesus, he then assured Peter the rock when he saw him the next couple of times that he would be the first member of Christ's church and would lead them into the future. See, Christ is a God of first, second, third, fourth, and more chances. That's the love that he shows for us. And it's the same with us for today. That's what you need to understand. Even with our flaws, failings, shortcomings, Christ has entrusted his church to us 
his believers and followers. In this day, in this age, the power of the Holy Spirit, we are to further his kingdom, loving God, loving neighbor, being the hands and feet of Christ, and furthering God's kingdom by being his representatives on earth. He will trust that to us, even with our flaws. Secondly, Paul in his letter and also John Wesley, they talked about finishing well, finishing your earthly life well. Well, Thomas certainly had a rough patch, didn't he, during these verses that we hear about. He redeemed himself, but also he went on to be one of the great apostles. It said of Thomas that he traveled maybe possibly more than any other disciple. He traveled further. You see, he went into India and he gave the good news of Jesus Christ for our church history to tens if not hundreds of thousands of Indian people in the country of India who traveled there by faith and by, by the power of the Holy Spirit. He continued to give the good news no matter what dangers there were of heaven to see Thomas finish well. And thirdly and lastly, we should never forget the words of Christ because of those who have not seen and yet have believed. You see, he is talking about us. We have not physically seen Christ, but we are blessed. We are blessed by the Lord as his believers and followers because of faith. It's always been about faith, dear friends. If you look back at what we know as our Old Testament, Abraham, by faith, left Ur and traveled where the Lord led him. And today it's God's grace, unwanted, unearned favor that is coming to us and our faith and accepting it by God's grace and our faith along with repentance. So dear friends, never forget the blessing, the specific blessing that we have from our Lord and Savior. For my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, may we all be able to proclaim those words about Jesus, the risen Christ. So to God be all the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Well, at this time, we have a couple of announcements for you. Uh, the first is there's going to be an online fellowship hour. You can find it on Facebook, on YouTube. There's going to be a link that we've sent out uh, by the email. And it's through a Zoom process. That's where it's very easy to do. You, you have an email in front of you or you go to those sites and you tap on it or click on it. And you'll become part of a group, part of a fellowship. And we'll be fellowshipping together. It's again one of the wonders of technology where even though we're in separate locations, we can fellowship together by that technology. Also, I want to continue to, to praise the neighbor to neighbor group. They do good works throughout and they're helping someone this week in a new project. They've also uh, offered to help uh, deliver groceries and pharmaceuticals to people who are not able to get out as often. Uh, the ministry still continues here. We thank you for your, your generous donations to the Shepherd of the Hills that allows us to do this live streaming, that allows us to provide the music, and allows us to continue our ministry. It's being done a little bit differently now as it, as it is for all churches. But we continue to minister, we continue to praise the Lord, we continue to connect and to reach out to others and yet we yearn for that day when we'll be able to be in a fellowship together in the same building, if you would. So remember at 1030 today, right after the service, we're going to have a Zoom online fellowship hour and our video devotions will continue throughout the week. And we just continue to hope to be a blessing to you and to stay connected to the power of the Holy Spirit, but also through technology. All right, at this time, we'll have our final hymn, Ferris, Lord Jesus. It's number 189 in the hymnal, verses 1 and 4.
as we are in our separate places, our separate homes during this week. May the Holy Spirit continue to connect us. May the Holy Spirit continue to lead and guide us, to give us grace, to give us wisdom, to give us discernment in these times of trial and yes, the time of testing that we would in this pandemic. But always remember, dear friends, that the Lord is with you. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. Shalom. Well-being. Prosperity. Love. Abounding. May he give you peace, dear friends. And may you pass that peace on to others with the love of Christ. So go in peace, dear friends. And always remember.